Oh my God, this is so bad. This is so bad. Please never tell me billionaires are the smartest motherfuckers on the planet ever again. Never tell me that billionaires are the smartest motherfuckers on the planet ever again. This is the wealthiest billionaire. The campaign already was slated to fail, but he thought he could do a gimmicky thing. And now the gimmick is that he relied on a fucking stupid con man that was going to deliver him something that he never had the capability of delivering. Now, Elon has done this his entire fucking career, okay? Elon's done this his entire career. But the best part about this, I love this. You want to know why I love this? Because the best part about this is that a lot of eyeballs are on this. So I don't even give a fuck about Ron DeSantis getting owned in this circumstance. I give a fuck about people and the hundreds of thousands of eyeballs that are on this looking at Elon and seeing how fucking stupid he is, okay? I've moved beyond Elon Musk. We've, I mean, I've moved beyond uh, Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis was never a person to begin with. He was never a competition to begin with. Donald Trump was going to make mincemeat out of him. He was going to call him Little Ronda or a meatball, and it would have been fucking over. Joe Biden's team is making fun of him. Dude, you're different all of that from like a normal caught, person with uh, an actively functioning brain. That. So I think what you see is... You're so fucking the, stupid. The They're broadcasting the audio over Twitter, you fucking idiot. We can broadcast audio and video in real time. And you fucking mentally stunted, adolescent, so diaper-wearing dipshits can come in here and write shit back in real time. And I can react in real time. In so it's not different, is it? It's just that no it's different because this doesn't fucking work. That's why it's different. Question is, is you fucking idiot! God! I hate the stupidity! It's not the racism, uh, it's not the it's sexism, it's not the fucking homophobia, it's the stupidity Florida that makes me go crazy, like I'm Al Pacino in heat! Fuck! Yes, I think it's very With your tight ass! Now let's take a look. Sixty-one thousand in the space. Nothing going on. Is it launching? Where's the video? I need to see. Is, isn't there a video too? No, there's got to be a video of it. I'm sure there's a video of it. Wait, no, for real. What the fuck? It's audio only. No, there's no video at all. Well, it turns out it's not only that there's no video at all. There's no fucking audio at all too. God, this is such a fucking stupid way to. God, it's such a dumb way to start. Oh my god. Oh my fucking God, it's awesome. It's so sick. Relying on notorious con man Elon Musk to and his fucking shit-ass platform that he broke for your stupid fucking uh, starting point for your campaign is so bad. It's so dumb. It's awesome. It's so fucking awesome. That's great. Just hand the W to Trump right now. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, everyone, depending on wherever in the world you're joining us from. I'm broadcasting live from David from Twitter headquarters. It's David Sachs here. Uh, Elon is sitting next to me. And we, want, and we want to welcome you to this historic Twitter Spaces event, and more broadly, a first in the history of social media. Uh, tonight, I'm pleased to introduce two individuals who've done more to loosen the... It's so... What? No. Double audio and then muted. No fucking way. No fucking way, dog. No fucking way. All it took was 245,000 people to break this. Twitch has better servers, man. Who do you have running? Who do you have running the fucking website on the back end, brother? All right. Sorry about that. We, we've got so many people here that I think we are, we are uh, kind of melting the servers. Uh, which is a good sign. 263,000 um, mounts the servers? Uh, introduce the, the, uh, the folks in, in the room here. So it's safe to say we wouldn't be making history without the man sitting next to me, Elon Musk. His decision to purchase this platform last year to restore to its original mission as a beacon for free speech and even to expose Twitter's past complicity with a government censorship regime might have surprised many, but not those of us who've known and worked with Elon for nearly a quarter century. His commitment to freedom, commitment to freedom and his willingness to put his money where his, his mouth is, upset the narrative upset control, the narrative control imposed on us by our government, elite institutions, and corporate media, 
uh, go ahead and send a, a heart up if you want to say thank you, Elon. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Governor DeSantis first drew my attention and support when I saw how he responded to the COVID pandemic and refused to believe what we now know to be the many falsehoods that government experts and their media mouthpieces were feeding us. He kept Florida schools open and its economy thriving while my state of California chose two years of learning loss and lockdowns that we have yet to fully. Dude, what? Ron DeSantis left? Is this a throw? Oh my, what is happening? Did he do this on purpose for Donald Trump? What is going on, man? Oh my God, this is so bad. Oh my God, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's not just bad for DeSantis. It's so bad for Elon Musk too. What a fucking clown ass, dude. It's so pathetic that it feels like this was a deliberate throw. Like Ron was the sacrificial lamb and Elon was like, yes, I'm going to throw my entire platform apart for you, Mr. Trump. Like what? That is mind boggling to me that it is so fucking broken. Oh my Lord. I don't want to touch anything because I don't want to lose anything. If 200,000 people can't listen Let's to see, audio so. on... Yeah, I think so. Um, Just to simplify this. This is so funny. Bro, this is like a high school project. Oh, dude, you could not have written... You could not have written a better, more poetic situation. Oh, my God. Oh, my fucking God. Donald Trump is going to... Donald Trump is going to... Fuck Elon Musk after this, okay? He is going to have butt sex with Elon Musk and his entire family. This he is going to fuck Ron DeSantis and uh, Elon Musk together, okay? Right, we're just uh, reallocating. He's going to grow uh, a second and uh, third so dick to fuck here. them at the it's, same uh, time. What crazy. the fuck? So, um, yeah, what um, is going on? I'm How? I'm so excited to um, have uh, Governor DeSantis uh, make this. Uh, Oh my God. Whoa! <laughs> They're so bad. Oh. They're so fucking bad. Oh my God. This is so bad. This is so bad. Please never tell me billionaires are the smartest motherfuckers on the planet ever again. Never tell me that billionaires are the smartest motherfuckers on the planet ever again. This is the wealthiest billionaire. $44 billion. Can't operate an audio-only space, dude. That is brilliant. That is bold. That is beautiful. It is so funny, and it was so predictable. I fucking tweeted about it. On the platform that we're on. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. I don't know if Elon Musk knows this, but like, um, the radio was capable of doing this, what they're doing right now, like a AM radio was capable of doing what they're trying to do right now in like the twenties, the thirties, the forties. So Really bad. I mean, really, really fucking bad overall. If you think I'm going to refresh, you're out of your fucking mind. No, if I refresh, I will absolutely be kicked out of coverage. There's no shot I'm touching it. First of all, an audio-only presidential campaign announcement is so fucking dumb. Trying to do it on Twitter is the dumbest thing you could have done. The absolute dumbest the stupidest thing you could have done because you relied on the biggest con man on the fucking planet. It is so incredibly toast. It is so fucking stupid. Bro, do you think this will have re lasting ramifications for DeSantis' campaign? The campaign already was slated to fail, but he thought he could do a gimmicky thing. And now the gimmick is that he relied on a fucking stupid con man that was going to deliver him something that he never had the capability of delivering. Now, Elon has done this his entire fucking career, okay? Elon's done this his entire career. 
But the best part about this, I love this. You want to know why I love this? Because the best part about this is that a lot of eyeballs are on this. So I don't even give a fuck about Ron DeSantis getting owned in this circumstance. I give a fuck about people and the hundreds of thousands of eyeballs that are on this looking at Elon and seeing how fucking stupid he is. Okay? I've moved beyond Elon Musk. We've, I mean, I've moved beyond uh, Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis was never a person to begin with. He was never a competition to begin with. Donald Trump was going to make mincemeat out of him. He was going to call him Little Ronda or a meatball, and it would have been fucking over. Joe Biden's team is making fun of him. No way. He said, this link works. Look alive, Jack. That, this is beautiful. This is poetry in motion. This is everything that you would have expected. Tucker Carlson's probably sitting there shitting out of his doo-doo ass right now, thinking about how fucking uh, awful his career is. Like, thinking about how awful his career is now. What he went from. The most, the most popular news commentator in the fucking country, okay, to this. This is what's going to happen to Tucker as well because you fucking idiots relied on a billionaire who has presented himself as this like brilliant Tony Stark motherfucker. Meritocracy is a lie and Elon Musk proves it at every step of the way. But another thing Elon Musk proves, as a matter of fact, is the reality that there are so many stupid fuckers out there who don't care that he's a fucking dumb baboon who keeps failing every step of the way. Oh my God. 21 minutes of silence is what we got? With three hot mic moments, this is all we got? 21 minutes of silence? They're talking now? Where, motherfucker? We can play the recording if you want. Past complicity with a government... The history of social media. Uh, tonight, I'm pleased to introduce two individuals who've done more to support when I saw how he responded to the COVID pandemic and, and refused to- Wait, what? They media. did do it. Uh, to That's awesome. Who've done more history or good morning, everyone, depending on wherever in the world you're joining us from. I'm broadcasting live from David from Twitter headquarters. It's David Sachs here. Uh, Elon is sitting next to me. And we, want, and we want to welcome you to this historic Twitter Spaces event and more broadly, a first in the history of social media. Uh, tonight, I'm pleased to introduce two individuals who've done more to loosen the... That's incredible. Melting the servers. Uh, which is a good sign. Um, all right, I'd like to just introduce the the, uh, the folks in, in the room here. So it's safe to say we wouldn't be making history without the man sitting next to me, Elon Musk. His decision to purchase this platform last year to restore to its original mission as a beacon for free speech and even to expose Twitter's past complicity with a government censorship regime might have surprised many, but not those of us who've known and worked with Elon for century. nearly a quarter century. His commitment to freedom, his commitment to freedom and his willingness to put his money where his, his mouth is, upset the narrative, upset the narrative control, control imposed on, imposed on, us, by on us by our government, elite, elite institutions, and corporate media. Uh, go ahead and send a, a heart up if you want to say thank you, Elon. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Governor DeSantis first drew my attention. It's so funny to glaze up Elon as his, everything is blowing apart. Pandemic and refuse to believe what we now know to be the many falsehoods that government experts and their media mouthpieces were feeding us. He kept Florida's schools open and its economy thriving, while my state of California chose two years of learning loss and lockdowns that we have yet to fully. That's fire. He's on David Sachs, it's not over. Where is David Sachs? Oh my God, is it breaking again? All right, I think we're broadcasting. <laughs> Man, I think we melted the internet there. Yeah, that was insane. Sorry, we uh, uh, I'm actually doing this from uh, David Sachs' Twitter account uh, because uh, it looks like doing it from mine basically <laughs> broke the Twitter system. Um, anyway, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we're incredibly excited to announce uh, the if you want to have uh, Governor DeSantis uh, on with us, with this uh, 
historic announcement. Um, and then look forward to a uh, live Q&A from uh, the audience. So, yeah, uh, yeah with, with that. Yeah, I mean, so uh, Governor DeSantis, uh, can, are you there? Can you hear us? I think you both. I'm right, here. I know. I think, I think I'm think. here. Oh, we finally, the, the bell of the ball. Twitter space. And it was growing by like 50,000 a minute. So uh, congrats on uh, on breaking the internet there. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, try some you know, new things. Again. You didn't break yeah. shit. It's 400,000 people, you yes. fucking idiot. Um, but so, I, I think the 400,000 people for audio. For people to hear directly from uh, presidential candidates and to answer a Q&A live. And you can get a sense for what, how a candidate uh, really is, you know, and, and where it's not just uh, canned speeches and uh, teleprompters. Uh, it's uh, you, in fact, you can tell by the you know some of the mistakes that that it's real. Um, yeah. So um, anyway, with 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 that, I, I guess I should turn it over to. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. let's see. So yeah, Governor, uh, there's been a lot of speculation over the last couple of months about your your plans. Um, I understand that you may have an announcement to make. Uh, we've got, I think, a, a record audience assembled here. Uh, a record you know, for you doesn't mean a record. Uh, what the fuck? Room that's probably ever been assembled online. I, what, what would you like to tell them? Well, I am running for president of the United States to lead our great American comeback. Look, we know our country's going in the wrong direction. We see it with our eyes and we feel it in our bones. Our southern borders collapse. Drugs are pouring into the country. Our cities are being hollowed out by spiking crime. The federal government's making it harder for the average family to make ends meet and to attain and maintain a middle-class lifestyle. And our president, well, he lacks vigor, flounders in the face of our nation's challenges, and he takes his cues from the woke mob. I don't think it has to be this way. American decline is not inevitable. It is a choice. And we should choose a new direction, a path that will lead to American revitalization. We must restore sanity to our nation. This means embracing fiscal and is he a Democrat? Sanity. Stop pricing hardworking Americans out of a good standard of living through inflationary borrow print and spending policies. And please embrace American energy independence. This also means replacing the woke mind virus with reality, facts, and enduring principles. His, Merit no. must trump identity. He said policy. we got to cut spending. We must return normalcy to our community. That was America's the first. That's your country. first policy. All Donald Trump's going to eat your ass. Expected. We cannot have foreigners pouring into our country illegally by the millions. We cannot allow drug cartels to poison our population with fentanyl. Public deserves safe communities and law and order must be maintained in American cities. We can't have inmates running the asylum and we must reject attacks on the men and women of law enforcement. We also must reestablish integrity in our institutions. This includes the military. I'm proud to be a Navy veteran, an Iraq veteran, and I revere our services. But when revered institutions like those in our military are more concerned with matters not central to the mission, whether it's, it's so warming scripted. or gender ideology. He's trying to do Trump, but with civility, and it's so scripted, it has no pizzazz. And you need to eliminate these distractions, and we need to get focused on the core mission. We also cannot have true constitutional government if the most significant issues are decided by the whims of unelected bureaucrats rather than the people's elected representatives. Reestablishing integrity in our institutions means we must reinvigorate our constitutional system by returning the government to its rightful owners, we the people. No social or economic transformation without representation. Truth needs to be our foundation. Common sense can no longer be an uncommon virtue. And in Florida, we proved it could be done. Uh, we chose facts over fear, education over indoctrination, law and order over rioting and disorder. We held the line when freedom hung in the balance. And we're thriving as a result. Florida is the nation's fastest growing state. We're number one in net in migration, number one in new business formations, recently ranked number one in education. We have a 50 year low crime rate. And one of the this is the high as it goes, chat. Shut the fuck up. In America. But we also understand governing is not entertainment. It's not about building a brand or virtue signaling. It is about delivering results. And our results in Florida have been second to none. We can and we must deliver big results for America. 
I pledge to be an energetic executive that will take on the important issue. Is he trying to win Biden's Democrats over? Like, is that what he's going for? Because it's so people. stupid. We will reverse those policies, and we'll build an economy where working Americans can achieve a good standard of living. Democrats don't Biden vote in the Republican primary, you fucking idiot. amounts of drugs to pour into the country. We'll shut down the border, construct a border wall, and hold the drug cartels accountable. Biden's embrace medical authoritarianism. He must believe that Trump is for sure going to prison mandates. or something. We will ensure that those violations of liberty. Otherwise, he's, never there's no shot. Again. Biden's allowed woke ideology to drive his agenda. We will never surrender to the woke mob and we will leave woke ideology in the dustbin of history. Biden's also politicized the military and caused recruiting to plummet. We will eliminate ideological agendas from our military, focus the military on the core mission. And we will reverse the poor. We're going to make the military threat. Nazi again. Let's Finally, go. Biden's weaponized the power of the administrative state to advance his left wing agenda. We will reconstitutionalize the executive branch and we'll bring the administrative state to heal. Now, you can't do any of that if you don't win. There is no substitute for victory. We must end the culture of losing that has infected the Republican Party in recent years. The tired dogmas of the past are inadequate for a vibrant future. We must look forward, not backwards. We need the courage to lead, and we must have the strength Obama! to win. And to Obama! Voters who are participating in this primary process, my pledge to you is this. If you nominate me, you can set your clock to January 20th, 2025 at high noon, because on the west side of the U.S. Capitol, I will be taking the oath of office as the 47th president of the United States. No excuses. I will get the job done. Now, these past few years have given me... Wait, a if you vote for me, I will the win. agility of our freedoms. I That's never thought I would so see dumb. things in America that we saw during the COVID-19 pandemic. But our founding fathers were keenly aware of the fragility of freedom. When they framed our Constitution, they came to arm with having studied the history of every republic and the history of mankind. And they noticed that all of those experiments only had one thing in common, and it was this. Every single one of them. I'm not kidding. Failed. I think Kamala so would be competitive against DeSantis. That's how bad he is. Of America to determine whether people could really govern themselves. Could we have a society based on the idea that our rights are God-given, not government-granted, and that society functions based on the rule of law, not the rule of individual men? And when Dr. Benjamin Franklin walked out of that convention, he was asked, did you deliver a republic or a monarchy? He said, a republic, if you can keep it. They knew freedom didn't run on autopilot. They knew each generation would have a responsibility to safeguard freedom. And it's our responsibility to do so at this important juncture in our nation's history. We have a lot of work to do to ensure the country gets back on track. I ask everybody listening to please join me on this mission. Please invest in our campaign by going to rondesantis.com and making a donation. Thank you. God bless, and I look forward to the discussion. All right. Thank you, Governor. Appreciate that. That's um, it? I guess just a, as a, a first uh, follow-up uh, here, thank you for putting up with these technical Bro. issues. I think we're, we're definitely breaking new ground here. Bro. As far as I know. I would uh, kiss myself. No candidate has ever announced uh, their, like if I, their, uh, their candidacy. No, I would kiss myself uh, after this. I, I would literally just be like, no. Nope. In a Twitter space. So nope. thank you for doing that. I can't walk uh, around. What made you want to kind of take the chance of doing it this way as opposed to just doing it on I can't walk around in public the, after the this shit. Way. No way. Well, when COVID hit, uh, I had to make decisions about do you go with the crowd or do you look at the data yourself and cut against the grain? And I chose to do the latter. Uh, I faced huge blowback uh, for doing that from the bureaucracy, from elites, from the media. But my view was I had to look out for the people I represented, prefer protecting their jobs over trying to safeguard my own political hide. But it was very, very lonely in a lot of those decisions. And part of the reason it was so lonely is because there was a concerted effort to try to stifle dissent. There was an official narrative about lockdowns, about closing schools, about forced masking, about all these different things that we had to navigate during COVID. If these uh, pussies don't ask him about Trump, they're such the fraudulent bitches, dude. In conjunction with the federal government. And if we can't have an honest debate in a free country about 
uh, issues that affect hundreds of millions of people, like lockdowns. He did not post this. Shut the fuck up. What is the First Amendment at that point? Those are precisely the times when we needed to have debate be robust. You should not be taking down articles that criticize uh, those draconian policies, and yet that's exactly what happened. So it occurred to me that if that had continued, uh, I think free speech in this in this country uh, was on its way out the door. And so when Elon Musk uh, stepped up to purchase Twitter, uh, he paid a lot of money for if it. If he did, he would be, uh, win the I'm general. Sure because he's a good businessman, Elon, I'm sure you'll, you'll end up making money off it. But bottom line is you had to put your money where your mouth is uh, because I think you recognize that uh, you can't have a free society uh, unless we have the freedom to debate the most important issues that are affecting our civilization. That did not happen during COVID. The truth was uh, censored repeatedly. And now that Twitter is in the hands uh, of, of a free speech advocate, uh, that would not be able to happen again uh, on this Twitter platform. So I think what was done with Twitter is really significant for the future of our country. We cannot have a society in which government is colluding with major tech platforms to enforce an orthodoxy. Well, th thank you. Um, yeah, we're, I'm, we're absolutely committed to freedom of speech and level playing field um, and just a vigorous debate. And uh, hopefully uh, this can be uh, a platform that uh, brings people of divergent uh, political views uh, to exchange those views and, and uh, perhaps some minds will be changed uh, one way or the other. And, um, but it's just incredibly important as you, as you highlight uh, that uh, the, the, the first amendment is re irrelevant if uh, all the media and all the, is it? And, and the government. Bro, are you're talking to the guy who violates it every uh, day. It, it He's Mr. Bookburner, you, know, you fucking the idiot. most important amendment, the one that was most urgently added to the constitution um, moot if you if you cannot have a uh, free and open debate um, so so tw Twitter was indeed expensive uh, but free speech is priceless awesome um, thank you awesome. So, uh, governor let me I'm gonna ask some questions while we get some other uh, kind of speakers in the queue to it's so ask sick for questions. David Sachs um, to take Elon's cock out of his mouth coming because to ask questions to Ron DeSantis only to ask questions that he truly cares about the Elon. I want to ask you about some of these accusations that are being uh, leveled at you. Uh, last week, uh, the NAACP issued a travel advisory against your state claiming that Florida is not a safe place for minorities to visit. Uh, what do you say to those who've been advised that somehow they aren't welcome in your state? Claiming that Florida is unsafe is a total farce. I mean, are you kidding me? You look at cities around this country, they are awash in crime. In Florida, our crime rate is at a 50-year low. If you look at the top 25 cities for crime in America, Florida does not have a single one amongst the top 25. And if you look at cities like Baltimore uh -huh. and Chicago— you got kids more likely to get shot than to receive a first class education. Yet I don't see the end. Florida is just a little eye. under the, uh, the outrage national the violent crime rate happening in those areas. So this just is a little bit stunt. These left wing groups have been doing it for many, many years. And at the end of the day, what they're doing is colluding with legacy media to try to manufacture a narrative. Now, the good news is, is fewer and fewer Americans are gullible enough to believe this dribble. And nowhere near like as low as like California, there, where people can debunk these lies in real time. And I would just say as an American citizen, if you are uncritically accepting narratives spun by legacy media and left wing groups, you're failing at your job uh, of being a conscientious citizen. Um, and I think people just see right through it. And oh, by the way, have any of these travel advisories, because they've been doing this for, for a while, all these left wing groups, have any of them worked? Well, we're the number one state for net in-migration and have been every year since I've been governor. We just capped the highest quarter for tourism in the history of the state of Florida. And our view is we want everybody to succeed regardless of their skin color. We don't divvy up people by race. At the yeah, dog, time, people are trying to see it one last time before it sinks. That we have in Florida more black-owned <laughs> businesses than any state in the nation. Uh, and we've also had more African Americans lead state agencies. Just want to see it one last time, bro. Than at any time in Florida history. But with us, you know, they're there because of merit, not because we're trying to play identity politics. And if you want to look at education, uh, the black students in the in Florida 
perform much higher than black students in most other states. We rank number three in fourth grade reading and number two in fourth grade math amongst our black students. What about other grades? And oh, by the way, the head of the NAACP lives in Florida and a lot of their board members have put out on social media during my governorship, Florida vacations where they seem to be having an awful good time. Um, that's great. Um, well, I mean, Florida's a great state, and I think everyone, the, 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 the it's actually a good own, that, um, except he's so uncharismatic, he can't even deliver it well. Um, I mean, I, I saw some uh, that's literally a great own. Like, he uh, should have just said, if they hate Florida so much, why do they live here? Listen to this uh, spaces on Twitter is basically a Nazi. Um, so, uh, or, yeah, <laughs> or the, yeah, that was the Atlantic. And then, Atlantic, and then yeah, Vanity yeah. Fair said that, uh, <laughs> that you were, you were, uh, hosting or interviewing because David Duke wasn't available. Oh yes. yes Although yes. I'm not totally sure who they were saying was David Duke. I don't know if it was you or governor DeSantis. It's sort yeah. of a little bit unclear, but, uh, but I they, think this is a function of these, the legacy media, these corporate journal, they're in their little bubble. And to to draw allusions to stuff like that, I mean, how crazy do you have to be? But in their little bubble, it sounds like a, they're making some type of profound point. And so part of, I think, what Twitter It's a joke, is and it's not even a good one. Is, Why are you so bent? They make it seem like that's the and narrative overall. You're not... Have tried to brother, you are not as scary as Donald Trump to these people, okay? You will never be him. That's not a, a good way, I think, to live. It's also not a good way to, to be a critical thinker because no one's ever going to question, uh, obviously, wrong assumptions because everybody around you shares them. Absolutely. Uh, I think they become totally critical thinking. Shut the like fuck the up. Donald Trump does not do critical thinking. Over the media is being, you know, disintermediated. Yeah. Because now, you know, candidates for president can just speak directly to people through platforms like Twitter. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the amazing thing about uh, Twitter and things like spaces are that, um, although I happen to be hosting it, 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 it well, well, I, I, I had to switch over to David hosting it because. <laughs> My account was actually There's too much interest. But... <laughs> My account was breaking yeah. the system, um, but uh, it's it's uh, there's really never been a, a mechanism before where uh, someone could address the nation or anyone who wanted to listen to them could from from anywhere in the world. I know, uh, I know. AOC gave a shout out. Anywhere. I said, so, "Let's run it back." I replied a, to her. I, I said, "Let's run it back." Really profound uh, change. Um, Juice it. And it's also like the it's not just whether the media reports something uh, and, and an article is is true or not. Uh, even more powerful is deciding what the narrative is. And totally. so, uh, you know, it's, so, so it's just like if there's only so much you can actually put in a newspaper um, or a magazine. Juice it. And, what, and there's only one thing you can really put on, on the cover of a magazine. So uh, that, that, whoever's deciding that is, is deciding to not talk about other things. Um, whereas with a public digital town square like we have here. Bro, they're glazing Twitter public, spaces public more than they're glazing matter, DeSantis. They're this is so people, awesome. Instead of uh, When a, a Twitter spaces has demonstrably been a failure. Um, which I don't recognize the irony of me using that phrase. <laughs> um, but what are but you saying right now? It's true, uh, um, and you can judge by the results, that uh, this is a means for the people to decide the narrative and for the people to decide uh, what, uh, you know, which, which way a debate will go. Um, not sort of five editors in chiefs of uh, newspapers, basically. Yeah, and I think one of the really crazy things that happened during COVID is that that uh, social networks really started censoring dissenting viewpoints on COVID, medical viewpoints that ended up being totally correct in in lockstep with what the mainstream media was doing. So basically, big tech platforms were undermining their main reason for existing, which is giving people a choice. And actually, there's there's somebody who I think knows more about that than any of us, which is Dr. Bait, Jay Bhattacharya, who's a professor of medicine at, at Stanford. I want to pull him in here. Uh, Jay, you go ahead and unmute yourself if you can. Uh, it'd be great to, to hear from you. Um, I know that during COVID, you worked with Governor DeSantis. It'd be great just to hear a little bit about your interactions and if you have a question for the governor. Thank you, David. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was an absolute honor to work with uh, with Governor DeSantis, and, and I was really impressed by his decision making in the face of of an absolute firestorm of criticism. I also replied, uh, but he 
you know, Governor, you did the right thing when you opened Let's the go. schools. And uh, my kids in California for a we year found and a half good didn't to come see out of all of this. Let's go. Whereas Florida kids were in school, and you can see it in the results. And the the learning loss numbers are so much better in Florida. Uh, I, I I'm really curious, Governor. Um, you know, as, as you're running for president, what are your thoughts about reforming, uh, you know, the, the the public health authority in the United States and the federal government, the you know, the CDC, the FDA, the NIH? How do, how do you see the reforms we need so that the mistakes of the lockdowns have, that happened during the pandemic don't happen again when there's another pandemic? Well, first, we need an honest reckoning about what happened during COVID. And the only honest reckoning is that all of those agencies, all of the elites, the public health establishment, they failed. They instituted bad society policies. has moved beyond COVID. Uh, obviously, it's a novel virus. Constantly talking about how good you were during lockdowns is only going to win the governorship. That the path That's it. Was wrong. That's as far as it goes, they bitch. They doubled down and wanted to do it even more. And I really believe had Florida not just kind of uh, stood in the way. I think this country would have had rolling lockdowns for probably a two year period. And so their impulses were authoritarian. They were not following the data. And I think the U.S. government needs to acknowledge the failures. And I think all of those agencies need to be cleaned out. Uh, what I saw just dealing with them was I saw a um, interest in the narrative and in politics over evidence-based reasoning and evidence-based medicine. Millions of people and died, so but like the American that, that psyche has moved beyond COVID. Uh, and I think you need major, and major overall. the only people who still talk about COVID are people who are either uh, pro-maskers who understandably, you know, uh, disability so, advocates and whatnot. With, the, with that. Or I mean, I the people who are the, anti-maskers um, who think the, about, like, the, the good old days and how far they got fucked over. You, you, uh, was and that is just in the edges of society. When we were the broad majority COVID. does not care. YouTube censored a video of us. Bringing that back is not a viable a uh, campaign strategy. On COVID policy. Uh, there's so much of the federal government infrastructure went Especially into for the broad majority. They don't want to think about COVID. During the pandemic. So it's not just public health agencies, but other agencies inside the federal government that worked to suppress the speech of Americans. And I'd love to hear that's your hilarious. Thoughts. No question. So copium, 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 copium started the, the, the danger there. So I'm actually going to be signing a digital bill of rights for Florida pretty soon, which will bar all state and local government officials from colluding or working with a technology company for the purpose of censorship of speech, because you're exactly right. You had people in the white house, you had people in all these other agencies uh, working with these platforms to try to take it down. And oh, by the way, what did they censor Dr. Bhattacharya for? It was a roundtable discussion that I led and convened. We had Dr. Bhattacharya, MD, PhD from Stanford. We had Martin Kaldorf uh, from Harvard Medical School. And we had Sinetra Gupta from Oxford, who was generally viewed as one of the best epidemiologists across the pond until she became anti lockdown. So these are all eminent people. This is what pretty are funny. We discussing? We're discussing um, whether there's any science. One Trump did that to force a school child to wear a mask for eight hours a day. They all agreed there was no basis to do it and that you should not have school mask mandates. YouTube thought that that was, quote, anti-science and that that should be taken down. But even at that point, we had already had enough experience in Florida where you had some schools that this had is, done it before before the state banned the mandates. This is so stupid, like a digital bill of rights. Yeah, well, how about you ask no Elon about the digital bill of rights, taken down about what he did Google, YouTube, with Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Huge, huge problem. And yes, I think the federal government, FBI... They don't give a fuck about collaborating with governments. ...any of the health agencies. Uh, it's unconstitutional for them to be delegating speech restriction to a private company. You can't do indirectly what the Constitution would clearly forbid you to and do Modi. directly. Let me, let me pull in. Uh, we have uh, Congressman pull Thomas in. Massey. Hassan Piker. Uh, go ahead and un unmute yourself. I mean, what we're talking about here is, I think, really unconstitutional actions by federal agencies. Uh, Congressman Massey, I know that you've been involved in, in uh, this problem of you know, government agencies being weaponized. Uh, and, and used against the American people in an inappropriate way. Uh, 
do you have a comment on this? Uh, and do you have a, a question for Governor DeSantis? Well, first of all, let me say uh, a big thank you to Elon Musk for buying Twitter and exposing all of this. Uh, on our weaponization committee, we wouldn't know so much of it if he hadn't done this, almost as a public service to the First Amendment. Um, it's a disturbing trend. Government, as the governor said, the government is colluding with big corporations. We found out this week from an FBI. Bro, they're riding Elon the harder than DeSantis right now. Voluntarily gave names of and, and uh, information on. They're doing tricks on, on it, dude. In Washington, D.C. from January 5th. They're doing January tricks 7th, on it. Overlaid that with gun purchases uh, uh, that they had on record anywhere in the country for any period of time. And just they say they voluntarily gave that to the FBI. So that's disturbing to me. Uh, by the way, I've never met Elon Musk, but I'm one of your oh. biggest fans. I'm the first congressman to have a Tesla. I'm on Star oh, thank you. I'm on Starlink. And uh, I would have bought a Powerwall, but I'm off the grid. And <laughs> you wouldn't sell me one. So I had to make one with a wrecked Model S. And it's, it's been running our house for five years. But um, my my... And just for the record, Elon, do a um, Nintendo. I, I, as a, I, Drone strike his house, as, bro. Uh, our first year is he Congress. broke your, he bricked He's your fucking Tesla, shit. But his license plate is Kentucky. Cold, <laughs> the so dick went like, all the way <laughs> through. Have that in the country. Bro, <laughs> thanks for I know, me, I know now um, why they actually uh, went with the uh, audio uh, only. Governor DeSantis, my question I know now why they did that. So you can't see Congress them Congress sucking each other's cocks. With me. And um, why is it that Congress is so feckless? at reining in these government agencies and and what do you think we need to do and if you were president what what would you urge congress or what bills would you like to see and sign to rein in this uh, you know sort of overreach of government bureaucracy well first i think there's a lot that the executive branch can do and i all i will say when it comes spinning to on the dick like he's a costco we'll, we'll chicken goddamn <laughs> But buckle up when I get in there because the, the status quo is not acceptable. Um, and we are going to make sure that we reconstitutionalize this government. And these agencies are totally out of control. There's no accountability. And we are going to bring that in a very big way. Now, part of the reason it's gotten so bad, power has been consolidated and effectively a fourth branch of government because Congress hasn't used its two main powers that it has under the Constitution. First, the power of the purse. If an agency is gauging in conduct that is outside the realm of what is legal or you think it's not good for the public interest, then you can remove the funding for those for those operations. Um, there's nothing that they're not entitled to get the same level of funding every year. And yet Congress runs the government on autopilot, either continuing resolutions or massive omnibus spending bills. So these agencies are all bulletproof. They know that they're going to end up getting uh, something similar or more every single year, uh, and it creates an incentive for them to, to abuse their power. The other thing you, you can do is actually legislate so you're not delegating to the bureaucracy key issues regarding how to enforce federal law. You should define what you want. All I don't think he realizes that implement <laughs> getting into the weeds Congress of policy is never going to be good. An invitation for the bureaucracy. And popular. To make really important because there's always way so more policy uh, driven nerds than you that are going to rip it apart. And it's not even fun for the broader majority. Do things that are going to transform our society or our country. That is Elizabeth the Warren the fathers drew is the greatest country. example. So I would you sign of. the Reigns Act? We passed it out of judiciary today. At, oh, yeah. No, of you course. Wanna... Yeah, that's a no brainer. Um, that would, I think, be a great check. Uh, for that. I also think that we're going to have a good chance uh, to see some of the Chevron deference uh, really curtailed or maybe even eliminated uh, based on the U.S. Sauger is right. Uh, upcoming jurisprudence. And I think that's a, another reason why the bureaucracy has become so powerful, because courts have basically been told they can pretty much do what they want and, and courts are supposed to just defer. I don't think that that's actually correct. I think the courts uh, they have to make a judgment about what does the law actually say, and you disaster to quote unquote experts in the bureaucracy. Thank you. Oh, it's back. We're back. All right, We're so here. back. We're so back, here. baby. Uh, disaster. I didn't even think of that. Me, uh, they blamed you for canceling. Ron, disaster. For a billion dollar investment in Florida said it would. They were canceling two thousand jobs. I saw other reports that suggested Disney was going to make the cuts anyway. Uh, and due to a larger, you know, budget cutting initiative, 
uh, regardless of why they did it, uh, why do you feel your fight with Disney remains important, uh, considering you already beat them on the parental rights bill that they opposed? And what would you say to some of your opponents in this race who argue that the fight has dragged on too long? The dumbest thing you could have done is so also all, go against Murdoch. Protection of children. We believe j jamming gender ideology in elementary school is wrong. Disney obviously supported injecting gender ideology in elementary school. Uh, they did oppose our parents' rights legislation. And the fact is, when they opposed it, that was a big deal because for 15 Tweeted years, Davis, I to let you speak. Yeah, he's not Disney doing that. Let's be real. In Florida politics, they pretty much got it. Uh, but not this time. Uh, I signed the bill. Uh, we did, as you say, win on the issue. But what happened was uh, Disney's posturing, some of the other statements that their executives were making, kind of the corporate culture had really been outed as trying to inject matters of sex into the programming for the youth. And I think a lot of parents, including me, look at that and say, that's not appropriate. I mean, we want our kids to be able to just be kids. And that's kind of our mantra. So you had this, this setup that Disney engineered many decades ago, where they actually had their own government that they controlled with no accountability. They were exempt from the laws that all their competitors had to follow massive tax breaks, and they even racked up municipal debt. And Florida basically put them on a pedestal many decades ago and joined the state with this one company at the hip. We just didn't feel that, that we were comfortable maintaining that oh, relationship. And so, so boring, we dude. Their boring! Status. Uh, so Disney has to live under the same laws as everybody. they got to pay the same taxes as everybody, and obviously they'll be responsible for those debts. So the reason why there's a, quote, fight is just because they filed a lawsuit against the state of Florida. We're rocking uh, with Trump. To get Boring. We're voting for Trump in the Republican primaries. Uh, but I don't think that that's good, good policy. And I think some of these Republicans that are taking Disney's side, uh, they're basically showing themselves to be corporatists because these are all corporate goodies. Uh, this is not the way you would run a competitive economy. And the, the arrangement had really... Uh, outlived its usefulness, but it, but it persisted because Disney was so politically powerful. I think the company's ethos have changed in a way that's alienated a lot of people in our legislature and in Florida. And so there was really no justification to keep it. But make Do no I mistake, think little Rhonda has a chance of beating Trump in the primaries? No, he never did. And he people certainly has solidified that he won't now. Fist. The because problem is, business climate. like, That's not it's good so stupid that it they makes me feel like maybe his goal is to just, and world, and like, we don't assume that, that Trump goes so, to prison. You know, I think that they should withdraw the lawsuit, but obviously we're going to defend our actions because we think we have the right to do what we did. Because, like, who is he triangulating you know, funny, for here? The, it makes no sense. to criticize Republicans for being in the pocket of big corporations, and now they're attacking you because you're not. Uh, well, not only that, David, it's interesting because the media in Florida for years – had had hammered Disney and they would they would point out like that this was this was not a good arrangement because, you know, Disney was not accountable to anyone. I mean, when we when the state control board took over the this district, the firefighters came to the board and they said, hey, we weren't getting survivor benefits for for some of these widows. And so the state control board actually paid out some of the benefits that they were getting stiffed on. There were a lot of people in central Florida who were really thankful that there was some accountability being brought to bear because, I mean, you know, it's human nature. If there's no accountability over any individual or entity, of course, they're going to behave differently than if you have a normal accountability. But the media was always very hostile to that. But just because I happened to be involved um, in bringing it back to reality and making sure that they were under the same laws, well, then all of a sudden they're running to, to Disney's defense. I mean, are you kidding me? And oh, by the way, on this project, you know, they had announced this many years ago. They had not done anything for it, but that is actually not also bonus points so for Elon's mic being louder than Rhonda's. So none of the issues that are involved in their suit would have made would have made a difference there. Obviously, as a publicly traded corporation, you know, they have a fiduciary duty to do what's best for their shareholders. So I'm assuming if they were in better financial shape and they saw the project as lucrative, they would have gone forward with it. But I think clearly they've had some problems with their stock price and a lot of other issues. And I'd also just finally point out Elon is not catching Tracer because he has a bunch of dick riders more money than me because they were open during COVID and they were closed in California. And that went on for many, many months where literally I had all the theme. I'm going to take her out real quick. Opened in 2020. People are going. It's safe. They're having fun. And the California parks were closed. I think they were closed for over a year out in California. So we were, uh, I think, a much better place to be doing business, uh, certainly since I've been governor.
Great. Let me shift gears here to the topic of education. I want to pull Chris Rufo into the conversation. I know work with you on some initiatives. I think, you know, one other thing that the mainstream media has, I think, bashed on is they've kind of started promoting this narrative that you want to ban books from school libraries, you refuse to teach kids about slavery or other unpleasant realities of American history, uh, or pretend that gay people don't exist. Um, since many people, I think, in this room, we're now up to Wow, over 271,000 people. So uh, this is, I think, totally unprecedented in terms of the numbers of people we have participating. By the way, I think Twitter is working much better now. I think it crashed because when you multiply half a million people in a room by an account with over 100 million followers, yeah. which is Elon's account, I think that created just a scalability level that was unprecedented. But with my meager followership, it seems to be working much better. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's we have some some scaling issues specifically re related to my account. Um, at one point in January, uh, if I tweeted above a certain size, uh, it would crash the servers. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and 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 then anyone else who was tweeting at the same time would, would lose their tweet as well. Um, so, so in any event, yeah, issues. yeah. Well, we're breaking new ground here. Oh yeah, totally, yeah, dude. So Radio was invented in nine in eighteen ninety nine. Okay, shut the fuck up, breaking, breaking new ground here, dude. All the been, all the you know, fucking say, Elon Dick writers are so pissed off at me on fucking Twitter. Because of the radio tweet that I had, it's hilarious, dude. The matter for people who maybe have never heard from you before, and then I want to pull Chris Rufo in on this as well. Yeah, so the whole book ban thing is a hoax. There's not been a single book banned in the state of Florida. You can go buy or, or use whatever book. Multicast you want. versus Unicast, well, we back comparison. Powered parents with the ability to. I don't think radio was connected to a server that generated traffic by hundreds of millions of users. It doesn't matter. To ensure that those books it doesn't matter, you fucking idiot. It was capable of broadcasting audio to millions, so hundreds of millions of people. Uh, Shut the fuck up. You are so stupid. Then use the radio. Example, then use the radio. That's the point. You guys are so fucking stupid. Also, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because there are plenty of other channels out there, television and other internet channels out there where you can multicast, where you can actually fucking literally broadcast in real time to hundreds of millions. I did a press conference that we called exposing the book ban hoax. And before I had the parents come up, before I spoke, I just played the video that had the images. Of the book Why don't you stream on radio? Because I'm on a platform that allows me to fucking reach out to hundreds of thousands of people in real time without interruptions. It too graphic. Unless it's the top of the hour ad break. News. How is it okay? Which comes at the top of every hour, but you can pay not eight dollars, but five dollars a month, ensuring that we to avoid said interactions. Uh, that said, are consistent with state standards and on the the, the racial history interruptions we eliminated critical race theory from our k-12 through schools that was the right thing to do in other words we're not going to take a kid who comes in um at six years old and say they're an oppressor or oppressed based on what their race you is. can also that's get it for free for, with the church crime we're also not going to be teaching or get gifted a sub if you're lucky country, here's the three minute break now the accurate history so Dynamic Jab 13, thank you for the five gifted. And critical race theory, we Henry and Hank, thank you for the five gifted. Teaching thoroughly about racial discrimination that occurred in American so history. So it's different. So breaking ground would be an okay thing to say. Require all of those. So it's different, but you just don't care about the other factors. So it's different. Dude, you're different all of that from like a normal person uh, with an we'll actively functioning brain. That. So I think what you see is you're so fucking the, stupid. The left, They're broadcasting the audio over Twitter, this. you fucking idiot. We can broadcast audio and video in real time, and you fucking mentally stunted, adolescent, so diaper-wearing dipshits can come in here and write shit back in real time, and I can react in real time. In so it's not different, is it? It's just that no it's different because this doesn't fucking work. That's why it's different. Question is, is you fucking idiot! God! I hate the stupidity! It's not the racism, uh, it's not the sexism, it's not the fucking homophobia, it's the stupidity that makes me go crazy, like I'm Al Pacino in heat! Fuck! Yes, I think it's very inappropriate. With your tight ass! ...explicit material in a fifth grade library, 100%. But it's also the case that if you're focusing on that type of, of instruction, there's an opportunity cost involved. Why won't we, why shouldn't we... This is different to radio! ...or math. And so I think we're getting it right. And I think as an old ass reference, many of you Zoomers don't know. I just watched it recently. Uh, when they're trying to craft these narratives, if you just peel back the onion, you realize um, that this is something they're manufacturing. 
yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I mean, uh, I was actually under the impression that that uh, <laughs> there, there were some books banned. So this is news to me. Um, and they actually, there but, was a, the one this week was that Miami got a great ass took a book that was about like poems from um, from I think like Biden's inauguration, and they moved it. Um, from elementary school library to middle school library. The media tried to act like somehow this is being banned, and you actually had Miami-Dade County Public Schools spokesperson. Bro, all I'm going to say, say is, there's nothing thank that's been fucking banned or... God. Okay, this is so boring. Thank God Marat's fucking SpaceX, la SpaceX launched satellite actually worked. Holy fuck. You do not launch with Elon Musk. Everyone knows this, okay? Thank fucking God. And that took like eight tries too, so remember that. But oh my God, dude, imagine if he fucked over my brother's uh, satellite in the same way that he just destroyed Ron DeSantis' like opening sequence. Oh my God, I would have lost my fucking mind, dude. Holy uh, shit. Woke test. And if they don't, they are going against uh, some of those books. Whereas in Florida, you can buy whatever book you want. But that's a different question than what would be appropriate for a third grader or what would be appropriate for a sixth grader government by uh -oh. definition has to make those choices Chat turd is about gone. what type of curriculum we want to put in front of our students. And the cat parents turd. obviously have an important voice in that. That's my first ever cat turd like. Absolutely. Well, in fact, uh, we're rocking with Trump so hard after this, boys. The blood called uh, wait, wait, but wine is really one of the most reasonable people on earth and one of the most reasoned people I've ever met um, had a lot of trouble actually uh, publishing his book. Um, simply because it, it debated uh, sort of sacred cows of uh, work ideology. Um, but an incredibly reasonable book. So um, th that, that's the, that, that is the kind of de facto book banning and de, de facto book suppression that, that I see quite a lot of, is, is that publishers are unwilling to take risks. Let me let me shift gears here for a second because I know we're running out of time. Um, we're supposed to end, I think, around four, but um, four Pacific, but... Thank you for giving us a little bit of extra time here, Governor. Uh, shifting gears to a major federal issue, immigration, um, we see kind of, I've seen these videos uh, on social media and on TV of what looks like just insanity at the border. Uh, what, what is your take on what's going on there, and how would you address that as, as president? Well, I'd reverse what Biden's doing. You need to shut the border down. You should not be entertaining these asylum claims for people crossing illegally. You know, asylum is a legitimate thing, but these are people that uh, when they come, I mean, they're being persecuted. These people come in overwhelmingly are economic migrants that are coming across many other different countries. They should be applying for asylum there if they were, you know, truly. Um, uh, it's the law. Uh, uh, why are they? Uh, they just show why up are the, the southern border. Why are the migrants coming to get a job uh, here? Coming illegally. They know just say they racist shit, you fucking saying, idiot. Okay, come back for a court date and just say something. Right? Just use a slur. Country. It's an Spice it up. You're system. fucking so, so we'll cooked. Uh, we will move say the B word when referencing like Latin, uh, Latino people or something. Uh, you are so cooked otherwise, okay? Even, even the fucking dumbasses in like really Louisiana and everywhere else. even what was the fucking what was the lady what was the lady who like uh, uh who ran uh Kelly what was it Kelly Leffler or something remember her that forgettable uh, fucking idiot even she had the decency to like stand side by side with white supremacists no not Carrie Lake Kelly Leffler in Georgia ran and stood side by side with like actual white supremacists so she could get a little bit of momentum going for her campaign Okay. With the fentanyl, she, he's so stupid. Like he's so dumb. Doing something they probably shouldn't do, but in pr prior generations would not have been fatal. The, it, like you have to throw red meat at your base, you fucking die. idiot. And so just hire me. I will help kids, run your campaign. You are so stupid. Epidemic, and I just don't think you could allow. You're so bad. Uh, You're so stupid. You are going to get fucking cooked unless you think Trump is definitely going to jail. And maybe you can make an appeal to, like, some centrist Democrats that read the New York Times or something. You're fucking cooked, dog. You're so dumb. The primary base wants you to say, execute LGBT on site. They don't want you to do, like, this whole nonsensical bullshit. Like, no, technically, no. Technically, no books are banned in Florida. Like, no, they want you to burn the books, okay? They want you to burn the books. They want you to burn the books publicly and be like, are you triggered now, liberals? This is what I think of your woke ideology.
Wait, is it over? What, what's going on? If, uh, if Steve can unmute, then we'll go ahead and ask him for a question. If not, um, we'll, we'll keep rolling here. All right. Three, two, <laughs> going, going, gone. I'm there, All right. guys. Sorry, Steve. I'm there, guys. Sorry. Oh, there, there you go. Is. All right. Yeah. My bad. Um, Steve was cranking it, dude. <clears throat> Massey said to Elon, um, Elon, if I put down money on January 1st, 2022. Bro, they're more Twitter, they're more obsessed the with Elon than they are with Ron DeSantis. This is literally an Elon I'd fuck fest. as rich as you are on that bet right now. I mean, it's incredible what you have done here uh, and the restoration of a lot of uh, accounts of people that were truth tellers and were ran from here for telling the truth. I saw a meme the other day that said, of course you have scientific consensus when you censor all the science. I saw a meme the other so day. I wanted to just say this is Ron DeSantis. A lot of great this is Ron DeSantis' campaign. The world, really. Elon is getting uh, throated by a guy who said, I saw a meme the other day. In that cause. Thank you. This is disastrous, um, dude. question is a follow-up to you, Governor, on this very issue with immigration. We have heard a lot over the Let years. Let me tell you something. Uh, lock her up. Ron is probably so mad as insane. I fucking doubt it, dog. You want to know why? Because he's too stupid to recognize how fucked he is. I don't even think he's pissed off. He probably thinks, oh, this went great. Insurance that you can make to the people that are listening right now, all over the world and all over the country, that you can actually do the agenda that you just articulated when others tweeted about it and talked about it, but then couldn't actually follow through. It's a great question because I share that frustration. I oh my God, they're asking him podcast questions. Florida will acknowledge. Oh my God, they're I asking him podcast bro questions. I don't. I don't make promises or say I'm going to do something lightly. I they're going to be like, tell us, tell us about a time where you felt conflicted in your history. They're about to ask him about like so fucking PUA one, shit. There will be follow through. Here is two, Red Pill Groper thirteen forty four uh, asking you a question about uh, why women are bitches and should remain in the kitchen and how you will get that. Uh, how you will make it happen? Doing the same thing for the federal constitution, and you've got to know how to use your leverage. Uh, to advance what you're trying to accomplish. So, for example, you know, there's leverage that we can use vis-a-vis uh, -vis Mexico that I think presidents have not been not been willing to to do. I think sometimes for political uh, purposes. Uh, but I'll look at okay, what are all the variety of options we can do? Which buttons can I push? And I will do that to be able to bring this issue to a conclusion once and for all. We had Hurricane Ian come through. Southwest Florida, Category 4 plus storm, September of 2022, and it did a lot of damage. But one of the things it did, it knocked out a bridge going from the mainland to Pine Island, and it severed the Sanibel Causeway in three different locations. And the locals were being told it's going to take six months to get that stuff repaired. And so they came to me, even though these were not state-owned bridges, and they said, can you help us? And I said, okay, I'll do it. So I got my guys together. I said, listen, no bureaucracy. Do you idiotic no liberals do not understand that no we know DeSantis is our best chance to win the presidency? Done. No shit. You guys want Trump to win? Dude, that's awesome. You're so fu later, Dude, they have, dude, they have Conway Democratic Party style that, followers now in the Republican Party. That's so sick. They got no libtards in the de in and the Republican Party. Sure we got it That's fire. So me, it is not Keep it up, brother. I I believe in you. Keep fighting the good fight. Forget about it. I'm as an American citizen. If I wasn't running, this would be an issue that bothers me. I've put a lot of my capital as Florida governor. Another Tim Pool lock. Combating illegal immigration. We banned sanctuary cities my first year. We just did a strong anti-illegal immigration. Dude, we're about to we're about to get some real. Uh, he I would win if you vote for him. Energy from these like centrist Republicans, which I didn't even know like existed. Katie. I had people at the southern border right now helping Texas, and we've even been able to relocate illegal aliens to places like Martha's Vineyard. So. Uh, I don't think any governor has probably gone out of his way to do Bro, more thinking he's owning to try the to libs? make an impact on this issue. Bro, and, he can't uh, even I'm own the medium. No for an answer. And I think our voters are sick of the empty promises. They want to see action. Thank you, Governor. Well, Governor, I saw, yeah, I saw the cover of Time Magazine this week, and I think they were trying to do a negative story because they had the, the, you were sort of scowling in this uh, portrait. Who are these you, unfuckable uh, losers, the man? They are so you, bad. Uh, the, the, they compared you to the Terminator. And I think they <laughs> meant insult, but I thought it was kind of cool. I thought it was a good thing because I think we need a cool-headed, ruthless assassin to go in and basically take on the woke mob, take on our out-of-control government, and take on problems like the ones at the border. So, again, I thought it made you sound great, even though that may not have been their intention.
Well, look, at the end of the day, this whole business that we're in is about producing results. I don't care about fanfare. You know, I'm the governor like that is I'm known. Right. And I go around the state and everything. And people are very nice. And so, I mean, I appreciate the well wishes, but but I don't need any of the fanfare. I don't need any adulation. I just know I'm in a position where I have a chance. Bro, to you got no difference. backers in the Republican Party, first of all. You've paid for a bunch of people to be and, on your team, but and, that's and it. You're so my cooked. first day as governor, four and a half years ago, I looked around the room and I thought to myself, I don't know what SOB is going to succeed me in this chair, but they are not going to have anything to do because I'm getting all the meat off the bone. Uh, I'm yeah. going to make sure that I for a guy who ran as don't say gay as a major policy, I've never seen so many grown men suck each other's cocks in front of uh, this many to, people. Uh, okay, Pennsylvania. he's getting yeah. sucked. He's doing the Governor, sucking. To, he's getting to, fucked. To he's doing and, the and fucking. Up on that. This it's is a Chris real Rufo. lemon you know, party. Honor okay, you in the past few years on critical race theory, gender ideology, and the DEI bureaucracy, and what I've seen, they have Christopher Rufo on. That while many conservative politicians going back decades have. Made Christopher Rufo literally lost the uh, Republican culture war. Midterms, they never actually man. get anything done. And what you've done over the last few years is really astonishing. You've eliminated CRT from all Florida's public institutions. You've stopped gender ideology dead in its tracks in K through 12. And just last week, you eliminated you stopped the gender DEI ideology dead in its tracks, sir. Thank you. They'll be shut down completely. And I think what you've done is established a, a blueprint for fighting back against the left's long march of the institutions and making sure that those institutions reflect the value of Florida voters, not left wing activists and the partisan press. So uh, my question for you is, you know, D.C. is another animal. It's quite different, the scale uh, uh, of the federal government. And how are you going to deliver results and what is your cultural culture war strategy uh, facing down uh, the swamp in D.C. <laughs> he blowing well, bubbles it on it. Is, oh, is, no. In this respect, when we're taking on things like DEI, you get blowback from legacy DEI. media and the far left. But th that's an example of an issue where they are out of step with the vast majority of Americans. It's not just Republicans. It's independents and a lot of Democrats. Because you think about if you're a, if you're a parent and you've got kids – you want to know when they apply to college, they're going to be judged based on their merit. And they're not going to be roadkill in some type of woke Olympics where they didn't fit some category and so they're denied opportunity. They want to make sure that achievement matters. And so we get a lot of quiet support for a lot of those things. And so I think what I do, just because, look, I'm a blue-collar kid. I grew up in the Tampa Bay area working minimum wage to get through school. You know, my grandfather worked in the steel mill in western Pennsylvania. Um, I just know instinctively kind of what like normal people think about all, all this stuff. And I have a good sense of when the legacy media and the left are, are outside of where the average American is because people want you to be using common sense and things like DEI. I mean, when I was growing up, I think it, it, things were, were, were better because people were actually told you should try to get along. Now, they're told you need to segregate. And it's just crazy that they're trying to do all this stuff. So by eliminating that, uh, there's a lot of people that were really happy about that, um, including people that certainly are not traditional Republicans. And I think there's similar issues when you do in the federal level. It's also the case that there are some tools at the federal level that we don't necessarily have at the state level. For example, some of the problems with the university and the ideological capture, that didn't happen by accident, can trace back all the way to the accreditation cartels. Well, guess what? To become an accreditor, how do you do that? You've got to get approved by the U.S. Department of Education. So we're going to be doing alternative accreditation uh, uh, regimes where instead of saying you will only get accredited if you de do DEI, you'll have an accreditor that will say, we will not accredit you if Bro, you do DEI. We want a color The whole point of like destroying woke agenda shit. Scheme is not for the nerdy bureaucracy of it. It's to fucking own the libs. Okay, if you're over here talking about how I'm going to destroy DEI through the institutional powers afforded to me by the Constitution, nobody's paying attention to that. The people that want you to burn books want you to just say, I'm burning books, you fucking idiot. Stop. This is literally the Elizabeth Warren method, dude. Looking at Bernie Sanders' success and then trying to do the Elizabeth Warren style like, well, we're going to make the military more green. Like, you're so fucking stupid. More in a more... 
uh, foundational direction about, hey, we're pursuing truth here, uh, and we're not here to try to impose one niche ideology on the entire student body. Oof. Great. Shifting gears, um, uh, Dana Lash, you, you, uh, you have a, uh, a question or comment? Dana is paid for by the I fucking do. DeSantis thank you both, campaign. Uh, so much for your time for joining us in a very new way. I really appreciate that. I think it's really cool. Uh, and for your support of free speech too. And Elon, I have to say thank you for taking the arrows and for unthrottling the accounts of all of us who got in trouble for sharing a New York Post story about a laptop. Uh, and Governor, what's it going to take for you to stop chewing to the fucking mic? I mean, what's it going to take for you to shut the fuck up? Oh, you're banned now. Second Amendment rights. And you're on my program tomorrow. And I just got to say, you got my vote in the primary. So I appreciate it very much. I, you were talking about DEI just a minute ago. Audio and pedophile, I, I be gone. About this growing threat against natural rights and free enterprise. It's this threat of debanking. Now, I know that, you know, Elon, I've read so much about you and what you've gone through. You've called ESG criteria evil incarnate. Uh, Governor DeSantis, Florida, saw financially weaponized wokery earlier this year when Wells Fargo Bank dumped both the business and business and personal accounts of a very prominent and well-respected gun dealer in Florida. They'd been together for 25 years working with Wells Fargo, and they cited new ESG guidelines. Now, similar to the DOJ's previous Operation Choke Point, all these activists for various causes are using this regulatory guidance to debank what they consider to be politically incorrect businesses for the sake of risk management. Now, we say that our rights should not be infringed upon by the government, but what can and should be done about activist-guided financial institutions and these you know, payment processes who fuck? are essentially cutting off law-abiding citizens and businesses? How will you well, prosecute it's, it's PayPal? It's a fundamental issue that I think not enough conservatives have been wise to. I think more and more are. But at the end of the day, we have certain fundamental rights. And so maybe you're somebody that is uh, you know, really excited about your Second Amendment rights. And obviously, if the government comes in and infringes that, we know you blow the whistle on that. That's a problem. But what if Wall Street banks are colluding? Uh, so that somebody can't function in that space, whether it's running a store or, or anything involving that, your rights are still being infringed upon uh, in that situation. And so I think this whole ESG movement is really trying to do through the financial sector what they could never achieve through the ballot box. And so they're trying to do an end run around the constitutional system, and they're really trying to change policy. They're trying to change society. Uh, and they're trying to change the scope of people's rights. And so in Florida, I just signed anti-ESG legislation, which said things like no ESG criteria in our pension fund. We got a $180 billion state pension fund. Uh, no social credit scores uh, for consumers when they're going to bank. In other words, if you apply for a loan, that loan should be judged based on your credit worthiness, not whether you're genuflecting to the appropriate left-wing causes. Uh, but one thing we did do is we did provide protection uh, against this debanking with the woke banking. Uh, no discrimination uh, based on your religion and other things, which we are we know is happening. So I think it's a, it's a it's a fundamental question. But we will not be a free society if major financial institutions. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. This goes back to my main point of contention with this. Okay, I'm I, I said this like. I said this last year when we were talking about, like, Ron DeSantis' bona fides, right? Because, like, Ethan was, like, very afraid. Austin was very afraid of Ron DeSantis. Do you remember? And I told you guys something even back then. If Ron DeSantis wants to win, he's fucked. One, because he's following Trump's lead, obviously. But, like, he literally is in a... The, every Republican, as a matter of fact, is in a horrible situation now where their primary audience and the general audience are very different, right? The primary voter base and the general voter base are very different. So if you're trying to triangulate to the primary base and you're actually like advocating for insane policies, you have to be able to have the charisma, like the once in a lifetime charisma, like Donald Trump, to be able to push for that kind of thing. But if you do that, then you're fucking up your chances with the general, uh, with the general voter population, okay? <laughs> And you're fucking up your chances with the Republican Party who wants to prop you up. 
okay? The Republican Party is not going to prop you up if you're going freak mode. They're asking him about cryptocurrency. Oh my God! Represents a threat to them, and so as you're saying, they're trying to regulate it out of existence. Look, could Congress enact a statute to uh, ban things like Bitcoin under the Constitution? They may be able to do. I would oppose that. Uh, I think we should. You, people should be able to do Bitcoin. I've told you, they're fucking asking him podcast bro questions um, now in this in this fashion, and for the bureaucracy to just do it um, on their own and make it so people can't operate in that space. That's what we mean when we say we've got to return the government to the people's elected representatives who are our voice to be able to make these decisions. Yeah, Trump was barely so, online. He just posted uh, a lot. He genuinely doesn't have the attention span to wade deep uh, through the psychotic culture war stuff, even though uh, he probably agrees like, with it. Like Bitcoin. The Santos uh, operation is all about attracting and appeasing those online culture wars. It failed with Blake Masters. With it. Uh, but, but Why would it work with that? Rhonda? I just do not have an itch to have to control um everything they're running blake masters again um, in this space and i think that the current regime clearly they have it out for bitcoin and if it continues for another four years you know they'll probably end up yeah he's really gonna he's really gonna win the crypto maximalist with this one a big constituency listen man all the crypto maximalists have already killed themselves because their crypto their shit coin that they invested into fell apart and so their wife left them, and the children think they're fucking losers, okay? They can't vote for you because really they're dead. A, has a big they dove into a fucking bathtub with a toaster so. <laughs> after their 11th yeah. shit coin <laughs> popped <Bitcoin> off. <laughs> Um, what so the fuck do you the, mean? The Doge, who, uh, who, who are you going to run? There. Who are you but running the weird for? Thing is that this, this uh, administration, uh, they seem to want to ban Bitcoin, but they want to create a CBDC, which stands for a central bank digital currency. You literally uh, just talk what, out of your ass, go take a shower, you stinky son of a bitch. So we were the first state uh, just last month. Uh, we actually got the Florida legislature to... When I got motherfuckers with this avatar... Florida does not recognize... When I got motherfuckers with this avatar purpose. calling me Some stinky, you know. You know I'm the most showered uh, motherfucker uh, on the planet. Studying this, we did the opposite That's your PFP, dog? I am literally the most showered motherfucker on the planet, okay? Well... Uh, you know, we're as projection, Congress will consult with the executive branch. We don't have a CBDC right now. And ideally, we would get authorization for Congress. Well, wait a minute. It's not ideally. You must get authorization from Congress. I don't think Congress. Would Love how angry Assange gets about this little brain, big body, Bushido blade we're trying to provide protection uh, for people here in Florida. I know Biden did executive order. They're studying it. I can tell you, uh, if I'm president, we are not doing a central bank digital currency. I think that that would be a huge, huge imposition on people's financial freedoms and financial privacy. And oh, by the way, what would the logical result of this be if the central authority has oversight over this? Of course, they're going to start imposing ESG criteria. Oh, wait a minute. You, you filled up your gas tank uh, three times uh, this week. You can't, you can't do any more. The sky of how they would be able to manipulate this. So I, I see it as a massive transfer of power from individual consumers to a central authority and i don't think that that's good uh, for a free society so i'm a i'm a no on central bank digital currency Sounds wow yeah. thank god well governor i, I want to this is a really time. important uh, question i'm glad he addressed here, it but I, I know you only had an hour and we've gone over that so I dude is there more time. are there more uh, like you know, fucking so random petty questions. online yeah. squabbles you want to address yeah, yeah. You I fucking idiots. And, um, DeSantis, we'll you're so sure stupid. That, um, you stupid uh, motherfucker. You dumb meatball fuck you. What the fuck? I thought you could at least have a little bit of fucking life so that this could be a long enough uh, campaign for us to enjoy the content of. You just fucking ethered your own goddamn self talking about cryptocurrency and Dogecoin when you're announcing your presidential run. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? What, ask him more about memes, guys. Ask him about memes, please. In November of 2024. God bless everybody and thank you. Well, thank, thanks, Governor. And yeah, we have th over 300,000 people in the room. It's really been pretty incredible. And, you know, we started with some technical issues because of the sheer scale of, and unprecedented nature of what we were doing. But yeah. it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And I think this finished really strong. So, yeah, I think it's just, it's just oh, really yeah, great for dude, copium. the people to hear directly from uh, presidential candidates. Um, and to have have it in, in a conversational tone, uh, which, which obviously results in, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be imperfect because it's not scripted. So, uh, but it's genuine. Um, and I think that that really gives the, the people an opportunity to understand who, who might be their president. 
uh, in a way that's real. So thank you very much for, and, for coming on and doing this. And the invitation's open to any other candidates who might want to do this. A absolutely. Um, it is important for people to hear directly from candidates. So um, thank you for uh, working with us on this his historic uh, event. And uh, uh, yeah, looking uh, forward uh, to uh, thank you, sir. And, and just uh, uh, This was incredible. Uh, bro. All righty, everybody. Thank you for just... Bye -bye. Bro, bye -bye. Elon, Elon dick riders are so fucking funny. They will never, they will never not be entertaining, no matter how fucking stupid they are, no matter how much I yell at them, because sometimes they get too dumb in the chat. The idea that like this is history is so fucking funny. Like fireside chats exist. Okay, number one, they they did not reinvent the medium. They tried and failed to do what radio has been doing for like hundreds of years. Okay. They could have done this as a Twitch stream and it would have been more viable and it would have been more successful and more eyeballs would have seen it. Okay. It is so fucking stupid. It is so Jover. And even then, it was an embarrassingly small number of people that tuned in, okay? Even at 400,000, that is an embarrassingly low number of people tuning in. eBay, uh, eBay fucking clears Ron DeSantis and Elon Musk. Remember, that's the entire platform backing him, okay? Cutie Cinderella has had higher viewership. Are you fucking joking? Are you joking? Asmongold is at higher viewership. Get the fuck out of here. Much hype, Ron DeSantis presidential announcement, a disaster on Twitter. Now they're fucking grilling him. Why? Because there's two different reasons. Because DeSantis sidestepped Rupert Murdoch and went to fucking Twitter. Okay? So it's like, it, it, of course they're going to fuck him over because now they're like, oh, you're eating crow. Have fun. Have fun with that. Good job on going to Twitter. Okay? It's so stupid, dude. It is so pathetic. It's so profoundly stupid that he did this. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know where to begin. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to begin. I don't know where to end this. Like, th this is preposterous, but also hilarious. Thank you so much. I just want to thank Ron DeSantis for giving us content. I'm a little upset. I'm a little upset because I thought his campaign would have more life in it. So that we could potentially, you know, make fun of it for longer. It does strike me as a dead campaign now. Hopefully there's still a little bit more life in it. You know what I mean? Uh, hopefully, for our sake. But it is absolutely, unimaginably stupid. It Crashing was way more content than the actual talk. That was so fucking boring. The talk was boring. Ron DeSantis and the way he has triangulated himself is already stupid. He's like backed himself into a corner. Is he the crazy own the libs guy who's doing crazy fascist policies? Or is he the civility guy who's going to restore sanity? Remember, he started off by saying he's going to restore sanity. Are you Hillary Clinton? Are you Hillary Clinton? He even used the o Obama reference. He said, we, might, we must not look backwards. We must look forward. He's got a shit ton of money, though. It doesn't matter. You're going to have a shit ton of money. So did fucking, uh, hello, Michael Bloomberg got a shit ton of money in the, in the Democratic primaries. How far did that get him? So did that other billionaire guy whose name I forgot already from California. It was so boring. Your viewership wasn't even above normal levels, which basically means it was a normal news day. That's what I'm saying. Now, Donald Trump just released a video mocking Ronald uh, McDonald DeSantis. Let's take a look. We are uh, kind of melting the servers. Him to freedom and his willingness to put his money where his mouth is. Upset the narrative, upset the narrative control control imposed on us by our government. By our government. It's over. Have uh, Governor DeSantis uh, make this. Uh... We're just trying. Dude, there are so many parts of this that you could fucking absolutely rip apart. Like. Talking about memes, talking about cryptocurrency. Are you fucking joking, dude? You didn't vet the people who were going to question you? What are you, fucking stupid? Are you that desperate? Are you that stupid? You really thought this was going to work? Oh, God, he's so stupid. He never had a chance to begin with. Yes. He never had a chance to begin with. 
people keep pushing back. Okay. But like he buried the the fraction of a shot that he had. At this point, any money that the Republican Party is giving to Ron DeSantis specifically so that he could be like the guy, a tempered Trump, is already, it, it's done. <laughs> it's time to go. Was I a good campaign? No. <laughs> it's just so stupid. You fucking called it yesterday. Uh, that This was going to have all kinds of technical difficulties. I'm going to be honest with you. That's not that big of a lock. I would say that it would be impressive, but it's not, Okay. I think it was the most obvious lock of the century that like Twitter was going to poop and not be able to handle audio for audio for 400,000 people. Like that's crazy to me. Okay. I stream on a platform that gets millions of fucking concurrent viewers every day with audio, with video, with real time chatter feedback. Like he couldn't do a radio show, dude. He couldn't do a radio show, man. They've been doing that since, like, the, the fucking beginning of the 1900s, okay? It's so bad. It's so fucking stupid. And, and you know, here's the copium. I think it's cool that someone tried something new and circumvented Legacy Press. It's the maiden voyage for this many years, and it won't be the last time. It's not the maiden voyage. It's not. That's the other part of this. It's not the fucking maiden voyage, okay? You could have gone a much better in a much better direction. You could have gone to literally YouTube. You could have gone to fucking Twitch. You could have gone to Facebook. You could have gone to any other platform, and they would have been able to handle this. Twitter was the one out of the major platforms that was demonstrably incapable of handling this. And you went there because you're the type of dumbass who believes in Elon's bullshit. That's it. And that's what happened. But I love it. I love it mostly because, you know, obviously this is going to be a failure regardless. But I love it also because, like, this kind of, once again, proves that Elon Musk is a fucking dumbass. And I thought, possibly, perhaps, that the Elon dick riders would have seen this as a moment, okay, uh, for, for clarity. They would have seen this as a moment for, for honesty. I really thought that the Elon Dick writers would have fucking turned around and gone, okay, yeah, it's kind of bad that he can't even run his own website and promise to do a fucking campaign launch, which is supposed to be historic, and fail disastrously because he doesn't, he fired everyone that knows how to run this goddamn website. Okay? No, I was wrong. Boy, was I wrong. Oh, my fucking Lord. Uh, I posted that. I posted the radio thing, and the Elon Dick writers have been fucking eating my ass ever since. Uh, it's actually different. It's actually different. Stream to that then. Multicast versus Unicast, a bad comparison. I might be wrong, but I don't think that the radio was connected to a server that generated traffic by the hundreds of millions of users. Your idiot is showing. That doesn't broadcast. And AM, FM radio technology is much easier than the data servers behind a Twitter workspace. Then use that, you fucking idiot. Use that. Why didn't you use that then? Why didn't you use that? You didn't use that because you're an idiot. You didn't use that because you're dumb. They act like websites currently don't exist outside of fucking Twitter that handle this load. You can't relate 23K Andy. That's hilarious. I'm a fucking singular Twitch streamer. This is kind of exactly what I'm talking about with the rollout suck because of the technology issues, but this is the pure snark theater criticism and not any substance. Eagerly waiting Nate's explanation why never Trumpers should pretend that this DeSantis must rollout was in fact a huge success. Wait, what? Is Nate Silver backing DeSantis? Bro, they didn't even fully understand your argument and ignored that your channel was boasting 225K while the rest of the site was up. Yeah, I, they're stupid. They're incredibly fucking stupid. They bought the blue check mark. Okay? They bought the blue check mark. They're already so stupid. If you bought the blue check mark, then, you know, I, I expect a level of fucking idiocy from you and you're delivering every single time. I just want to know why DeSantis is trying to appeal 
to and win the votes of weird crypto libertarians when they frequently talk about how they hate voting? Bro, there aren't that many weird, there aren't that many fucking uh, weird crypto guys anyway. Like I said, they all got shellacked. They all got shafted. They don't have money anymore. They're not even a crypto bro because they don't have crypto. BBC radio broadcast 27 million people a week. Not being able to do 400K is sad. Yeah. We had, between me and AOC, we had more than 400,000 viewers. Without a single fucking tech issue. And that was audio and video. If you cannot comprehend how fucking disastrous this is, then society has really failed for allowing simpletons like yourself to survive, okay? I truly don't know how hard you got babied up until this fucking point. Like, literally. It genuinely does not make sense. They are making it seem as though there's no other websites on the planet that can handle that fucking load. Every other website on the planet can handle that. Oh, my God. No child left behind ruin an entire generation. No, these people are stupid, man. They're fucking... They're, they're older. They're dumb, but they're older. They're not like the no child left behind generation. They're like older than me half the fucking time. I live in Florida, and it's the same. It's the best state since Ron has pulled us. You don't know shit about anything. I promise you, you will save real America, you stinky fuck. I think it's shower time. Shower alarm go, man. What? Why does motherfuckers keep saying shower? That's my line. All you do is talk about people in Ron DeSantis, but you never say anything about him. Genuinely a good candidate. You don't want to admit. Okay, let's take a look at this guy. Oh, it's fucking Earl Sweatshirt, who I actually know personally and have balled with. He would hate you, by the way. For the record, I just want to let you know, the people that you idolize, I sometimes meet in the real world. And I promise you, if he ever met you, he would think you're disgusting. Dude, it's awesome. There's Ron DeSantis simps. I love this. This is pretty fucking awesome. It's a Nazi dog whistle gas shower, they mean? What? No, they're not. What? No. Ron DeSantis endorsed Kanye. Jew tweets go to his Twitter. You guys act like Ron DeSantis. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, maybe he is a Nazi. Oh, shit. Maybe he does mean gas showers. I hope DeSantis wins. Then the Republicans will have a bigger chance of losing the election. Ron DeSantis is so lame. You got to be far right, at least support Trump. Yeah, that's what I don't get. If you're like far right and you're making like Nazi, uh, you know, shower uh, references, then why aren't you like, why aren't you pro-Trump? You know what I mean? I, I, that, that's actually something I don't understand. Like l legitimately, I want to know. Lol, hop in a call. Yeah, uh, I think I'm good on that. Just answer my question. If you are making, like, Nazi references and stuff, okay, if you're, like, a groiped-up shouty, then why do you like uh, Ron DeSantis over Trump? Yeah, let me, let me hop in a call so you can, like, scream the N-word as your voice breaks numerous times, dude. Oh, let me hop in a call. Yeah, totally, man. Let me do that. Fucking loser. Donald is a loser. Yeah, Ron DeSantis is a fucking loser. An even bigger loser. He's trying to emulate a loser, you idiot. DeSantis is better at implementing fascism. You smell like shit, Ron, over Ronald Reagan. There, I said it, LOL. Uh. Not going to answer. He's a fucking pet. 
Yeah, look, gave me money for school. He also wear rig arms. Yeah, he's just he's a pet. He's a fucking idiot. He's just trolling. I don't think this person is even I don't think he meant like Nazi gas uh chamber style memes. I think he just said that I stink. We love Donald Trump here. You better keep his fucking name out of your goddamn mouth. You hear me? I'll fuck you up, bitch. In the marketplace of ideas, of course. You better not fucking come after my boy Donald. You understand? With some bullshit-ass Ron DeSantis shit. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Well, this is a Donald Trump. This is a Donald Trump safe space, okay? Anyway. <laughs> this is an evergreen tweet where he fucking destroyed Elon Musk. When Elon came to the White House asking me for help on all his many subsidized projects, whether it's electric cars that don't, dr don't drive long enough, driverless cars that crash, or rocket ships to nowhere, without which subsidies he'd be worthless. He's right, by the way, again. And telling me how he was a big Trump fan and a Republican, I could have said, drop to your knees and beg, and he would have done it. That's so fire. Elon would literally drop to his knees and beg right now to get Trump back on Twitter. If Trump got back on Twitter, Elon Musk would probably be able to like return some of the revenue. You being serious? Why do you like Donald Trump? What? I, dude, what are you talking about? Joe Biden will be streaming Fortnite with streamer Ninja. We tried to stream with George Bush, but he kept bombing Tilted, says Ninja. What? No, man. I don't, like, actually genuinely like Trump. I mean, I think he's content, but that's it. Elon Musk. I was on live and five times kicked off. Grr, says Doris Gentry. These are the new wave, dude. This is the new wave of Twitter users, the Twitterati. Fuck, man. Former Vice Mayor Napa, California God Police, MAGA count ball ballots by hand, anti-woke, Mensa, Constitutional's guns don't kill people. Guns don't kill people do. I love her. Anyway, uh, Dana Loesch, who is paid for, to be saying this dumb shit. We all talked about the new means of info distribution in the legacy press and left hope that anything this platform attempts fails because it presents a challenge to their control. Okay. Grandma is Mensa, but she's not smart enough to fucking, uh, I don't know, not smart enough to fucking not buy Twitter blue. Okay, let's watch this. Who would you rather have as president in 2024, Trump mm. or DeSantis? As much as they talk shit about Trump, he probably the best thing for America right now, no cap. Really? Trump. Andrew Dade. My man Trump. He's gangsta. I like him. I love him. Why? When Trump was president, nobody really f***ed with us. Other nations respected us. I yeah, no, totally. I think you need somebody in office that got a little bit of gangsterness, a little bit of personality. You need that. Make America great again. Let's go. Who would you rather? Yo, fucking Florida is so stupid, dude. It's going to be underwater soon. It's going to be underwater soon. It's fine. It's going to be underwater soon. Even the website is scuffed. Wait, no fucking shot. There is no way that this is the actual website. What? We've only, we've only just begun to fight for our great American comeback. What is that? The fuck is that? It doesn't make sense. A poker chip with a check in the middle? I know. But, like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make... This is the... No shot. This is the website?
It's WinRed. I think that's just a donation website, not his official campaign website. Oh my God. That's got to be a phishing site. RondeSantis.com redirects there. Wait, what? It says it's not secure. And there's a gator. New Trump dropped about Rhonda, little Rhonda. Oh, we watched this already. But like the problem is he's on fucking Truth Social. So like this is a banger tweet that would have gotten like hundreds of thousands of likes in the same time frame. But unfortunately, because he's on Truth Social, what is this? 7,000 re... 2,000 retruths, 7,000 likes. Like you can't do that, brother. That shit would have blown up on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Elon's statement. Let's see what he said. All presidential candidates are most welcome on this platform. <laughs> Bro, he wants Trump back so bad. I'm going to do a sexy face, a sexy emoji. Where is it? Why can't I find it? What the fuck? Am I not seeing it? I'll do flushed. Little Rhonda's great comeback, dude. He thinks that he could get he basically thinks that he could get Trump back if he had little Rhonda on. Doesn't realize that like it was a failure and Trump's just making fun of him. So much chatter about Governor Rhonda Santos being socially awkward with no personality and humor. But when I spent time with him recently, I thought he was a personable, smart, direct, funny, confident, and laser focused on doing his job and winning. If I were Trump, I'd be very worried. Why are they standing like that? Wait, why are they, what? Wait, they're both manlets? What the fuck? Dude, dude, first of all, last time a president was under six foot, he was on a wheelchair, okay? Just letting you know. So, pretty sure that already is like a major fucking uh, marker for for big homie over here. Well, little guy. George W. Bush was 5'11". Okay, no one is 5'11". That means he was six foot. Um, don't say manlet, say short king. No, there's a difference between manlets and short kings. Little Rhonda is a manlet. Noel Miller is a short king. This is so good. There's a lot that we need to cover, but I do want to go to Fox News Live to see what the fuck they're saying about how disastrous this has been, okay? Dude, if I was Tucker Carlson right now, I'd be fucking shitting my diapies, okay? You are, this is your future, brother. Have fun. New tonight, no deal. The deadline for a debt ceiling vote is just eight days away, and there is- Boo, boring. They're there. That's awesome. Yeah, they're incredible people, man. You saw all the stuff we put in these homes, oh, right? man. I was, I was blown away. And they deserve it. They've this? heard that this is yeah. not, of course, we give them a mortgage-free home, but mm -hmm. look what they gave up. They gave up their bodies. So, Cole, why should Americans... Boo, boring. Yeah, we saw the Fox homepage. The assumption as recently as a few months ago was the Sands had a huge advantage in the Murdoch Fox was prepared to go to math for him. Now they're... They're now stressed by a lawsuit, Carlson fallout, facing competition, and he's getting killed in coverage right out the gate instead. 
Yep. Why did he post his dad's fucking truth on Twitter with the term with uh, yikes? God, they're such they're all such fucking losers, man. Let's see what Ben Shapiro had to say, though. Tonight was a perfect exa- encapsulation of the campaign. If you're obsessed with the optics of Twitter spaces glitch, then you're probably not going to vote DeSantis. If you're interested in political substance, DeSantis is likely your candidate. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, is he writing? Is he writing for DeSantis? He's so cooked. DeSantis is so fucking cooked, dog. Oh, he's so cooked. Like, Ben Shabibo was riding for anyone but Trump early on. Just remember, until he won the primary. And then he was, of course, forced into supporting Donald Trump, just like all the other Republicans were. Charlie Kirk was another person like this. At least Charlie Kirk now is smart enough to still be riding on that Trump train and not fucking, uh, you know, take the first ramp off on DeSantis Avenue. (sighs) Oh. So dumb. So fucking dumb. These guys are so stupid. Yeah, exactly. 650,000 listeners crashed the site. The PlayStation showcase today had well over 2 million views and it went fine. Exactly, dude. 